the nightmare is over. Season 3 of The Mandalorian has come to an end, and I'm here to recap it. Let's get started. This episode fires up right away. Almost feels like the whole thing was part of one episode that they broke into another because we have Bo-Katan and the crew just out of the gates running for their lives as Moth Gideon and his crew are in pursuit. Din Djarin, meanwhile, being held captive, he's taken down some corridors, and this leads to an actual great fight. Before I really dive in, I should encourage you to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. If you haven't hit that notification bell and you are subscribed, you're actually hurting the channel and my standings with YouTube, so we have to hit that notification bell, and I need you here. I need you to subscribe, because we have a lot of fun. And now I've recapped the entirety of Mandalorian Season 3, and I'm sure... I'll jump back in for season four. Last thing I want to say before I dive into this, easily the best episode of the season for The Mandalorian. I thought this was actually pretty enjoyable. Is it perfect? Hell no. There's lots of issues still. But overall, this was a pretty solid episode. A very fast-paced one, for sure. I don't know when this whole thing was shot and finished, but it feels like, at least to me, they listened about Din Djarin being kind of a useless oaf this entire season, and they had him kick a lot of ass here. There are multiple moments where he's standing his ground, he's fighting two to three dudes at the same time. We haven't seen this guy in quite some time. Where you been, Din? Good to have you home. Good to have you back. You know who else is back? R5. The little trash can that could. Din brings him up on the comm. He's like, buddy, I need ya. Gotta have you. He wants him to hack into Moth Gideon's interface, pull up some schematics or some shit, so that he can get to the throne room, the control center of this whole thing. He wants to fight Gideon. It has to end here. Because Moth keeps coming back to a flame every single finale. It's like the only time this guy shows up. He's out on a sabbatical for six or seven episodes, and then he puts down the sandwich, and he puts on a suit, a Power Rangers black Batman suit, and he's like, all right, it's time to tear some ass up. We really have three different threads going on that are all going to culminate in one final crescendo. We have Din and Grogu fighting Moth Gideon. We have Bo-Katan trying to get her tribe of people to safety. Then we have the cooler Mandalorians up in the skies fighting a battle up top. These are the ones that can take their helmets off. They're not part of a weird cult. Don't look like complete idiots. I mean, they're still part of a cult, but at least it's a little bit more respected. And while this early aerial combat is going on, I will say it felt like Star Wars here. It felt like I was watching some old school Star Wars movies and I was for it. Unfortunately, it doesn't last more than maybe 30 seconds, but some of those shots are beautiful. Very well put together episode. Season three, for better and for almost entirely worse, has really gone all in on the sequel and prequel trilogy, trying to tie all this trash together in some sort of a beautiful compactor. So we've had mention of the clones. We've had callback characters and visuals from the prequels, such as one coming up here, which are those cool red blast doors that we saw in episode one. But instead of Darth Maul playing with his staff and doing some fancy tricks, we have a bunch of different guards. And then we have Din Djarin like he's in a final fight game telling R5 to open up each individual blast door so he can take out one or two guys individually. <laughs> Next door opens. R5, open the last door! R5! While this is happening, Bo-Katan and her crew stumble upon something you'd see out of a Better Homes and Gardens. This is like a little utopian rainforest. Bunker down inside of the planet Mandor. She's led there by the hobo Mandalorians that have been living here the whole time. And she's like, I can't believe there's plant life. How did it sustain itself? I, I can't believe any of this. Hobo Mandalorians are like, uh, yeah, maybe if any of you pricks thought one time to fly down here... We could have avoided half of this problem. You would have seen that Moth Gideon's been building an army the whole time. You guys kind of suck. He didn't say that, but I know he was thinking it. Because I was thinking it. There's lots of action. This is a very action-packed episode. And I have to point out something. Uh, just a side note, if you will. We see a ton of Mandalorian jetpacking around. There's hand-to-hand -hand combat up in the skies. They're shooting. They're fighting. It's, it's wild stuff. All I'm thinking during this as they're flying the speed of a TIE fighter is, 
We really couldn't catch up to that dragon a couple episodes back and save some of those kids from being captured and eaten? Some of those foundlings maybe could have avoided dying at the, at the teeth of a giant prehistoric creature because you wanted to save some gas in the, in the burners? Uh, no, I, I'm sorry, but that episode was hot trash. And it, it's very inconsistent. Let's keep going. Another thing I want to point out about this scene, and we're 17 minutes in about, nothing really cringy's happened. It's all been very solid stuff until now. Until the armorer shows up, the, the punchline that keeps on giving. We have some hero shots of our characters flying in front of green screens or digital screens, whatever you want to call them at this point. Not real places. Looks solid though, looks very high res, very, very impactful. Uh, anyway, we see Bo-Katan. She's got the katana, the black saber, uh, posing like a boss. Then we have a couple other Mandalorians, double guns blazing. It's pretty cool. And then we cut to the armorer with her wrench and her little hammer or whatever. It's like, I'm ready. It's so bad. You couldn't get a gun for this. A bow staff, something. You have a socket wrench and a players and you're going into battle. I can't wait till the uh, bakery Mandalorian shows up and he throws pies for his special ability. Ha! Ha! Uh, stirring shit. Stirring up, stirring up a bomb. Throws it. it. Just pie mess everywhere. Or maybe there's a fishing Mandalorian. Zzz! Reels in a big one. Zzz! I hate the armor and her voice again. Uh, I declare that the Mandalorians are home. This is the way. No one else talks like me at all. Jeff over there, for instance, is from San Antonio. He's a good kid, but he doesn't know the way like I do. I, I mentioned Grogu's with Din. He's still in that Fisher Price mech saying yes and no once in a while. Looks cute as hell in this one. Just adorable. I can't wait for the merchandise to come out. They head through some secret laboratory, which has a bunch of clone versions of Moth Gideon just floating in tanks. One of them winks. They're all destroyed. It's a complete disaster, but it looks like it was one that was accomplished. Unfortunately, accomplished in vain as they never got to be used to their full potential. Sure, for potential. Moth Gideon goes on one of his standard monologues at this point. Thankfully, it's not very long. It is somewhat informative. He tells Din that using the power of cloning tech and by mixing the right spices and potions and adding the secret ingredient, Chemical X, he was able to give the new clones Jedi abilities. I guess he found a way to grow midichlorians or something. Saute them, fry them up, add them to the spice, add them to the mix. I don't know. It's very glossed over. Doesn't really matter. It doesn't go anywhere. I assume season four will dive into it further, which don't worry, it's already been put to paper. It's already done. Presumably because John Favre had two hours to himself to do the entire season in. Beautiful stuff. Now we have an epic showdown between Moth Gideon and Din Djarin. It's all been leading to this. Or something. I actually don't know what this show's leading to anymore. Grogu was there in his Gundam, but he's pushed back because the Praetorian Guards, or whatever they're called from The Last Jedi, the three red badass dudes with the, the whip laser chains, they, they surround him. They push him back into a blast door area. Hope he's gonna be okay. I know he is, but, you know. As Moth is about to best our boy Din, in comes Bo-Katan, shot out of a cannon, doing a barrel roll right into Gideon, lays him on his ass, busts out the dark saber, and now we get a different one-on-one -on -one showdown, because this allows Din Djarin to go save his little buddy in the other room. And you don't have to tell him even once. Din is out the door, he's like, uh-huh, bye! We cut to Grogu. Mech is destroyed. He's now doing hopscotch up top the rafters while the guards are trying to smack him down. They're like, eh! It's like trying to get that one fly that's in the house. Eh! And it moves. God! Easy, easy, easy. Ah! Missed again. Once in a while, he'll toss out a force ability. He's just like, eh, I don't want to. I don't like it. And the guard's like, oh, falls back. Then he kind of forgets again because Grogu's just a little baby. Just a cute little tiny baby. Din comes in and both of them take on, it's a 2v3 showdown. They make pretty short work of these clowns though. And then Din and Grogu are able to go back and help Bo-Katan. There's lots of back and forth saving and fighting and saving and fighting, but it's all pretty well done. So it's okay. 
It's a good thing Din came when he did, though, because Moth Gideon has just destroyed the Dark Saber. And he's like, what are you going to do now, brah? Your saber's busted. And she looks at him, she's like, it's not about the Dark Saber. It's about family! She said it the same way Zachary did in Shazam 2 in that horribly cringy moment outside at the picnic table. I'm joking, it didn't go down like that. Katie Sackhoff is much better than that. The, but Din did come in just in time. So now we have a Grogu, Din, Katie Sackhoff, Bo-Katan fighting Gideon. It's anybody's game. But really, he's kind of outnumbered here, and it's not very fair. So they fight for a while. As the giant Mandalorian dropship is careening down from above, Pretty Boy Mando jettisons out the side. If you've seen The Incredibles, you know how this plays out. The smoke clears, and we see, oh, thank the gods, Grogu has made a field around Bo-Katan, Din Djarin, and himself using the Force. You could call it a, um, uh... A force field, I guess, is what I would say. Yeah, a force field works. We then get our New Hope ending of sorts where a ceremony takes place, but this is with, like, the short bus crew. It's in the Mandalorian caves. We're back at the swimming pool. They're dipping a foundling in. He's ready. He's part of the cult. And then and then Din brings over Gro poor Grogu, saddled with this dumbass who wants to be part of this cult so badly and not take his helmet off. Puts Grogu down, and the armor is like, No! This is unacceptable! He cannot even talk on his own. He's a mute. He's a baby. He's a mutt. We do not accept him into the tribe! Ka-ting! 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 And then Din's like, Hold up, bitch. What if I adopt this little shit? Now he's one of me. I make him my Mandalorian apprentice. That's a thing. That's a thing now. So yeah, maybe I can't dip him in the pool, but he's my flesh and blood. What do you say to that? And then she's like, hmm, this is the way, of course, this is the way. Machine Gun Kelly and Mandalorian Heaven's like, this is the way. That didn't happen. There was no call back to Machine Gun Kelly. He's gone for good. And that is for good. Honestly, he was stupid. She also says that from this point forward, Grogu will now be known as Din Grogu. <laughs> Uh, what? What? Why? I don't know, but there's going to be Din Grogu toys on the shelf at Christmas. I can tell you that much right now. Din Grogu, regular Grogu, mech Grogu. It's all there. You know it's all there. As the Din Grogu ceremony is taking place, there's an underwater cam that goes to the way bottom, and there he is. That mythosaur who opens the eyes. He, he had his interest peaked. He was in a nice little REM sleep, and this news up top kind of piqued his interest. He's like, I sense a disturbance in the Mandalorian force. But is that disturbance good or, or bad? I guess it remains to be seen. The armor also tells him that naturally he now has to go on side quests, misadventures, get up to no good, shenanigans possibly, with little Din Grogu, because that's part of the apprenticeship. You have to go on misadventures. And he's like, naturally, this is the way. That's what I knew. So what's happened is they've reset all of it, pretty much. And hopefully we just focus mainly on him and Grogu again, and less on the other Mandalorian idiots, who, quite frankly, anytime they get further into this cult, it, it makes me shake my head at how dumb it is. And I like Katie Sackhoff, so we can maybe spin her off into a different show would be, would be fair. But I think that they're probably going to do the Mandalorians for season four, and that's just how this is now. Last couple things to note. He meets back up with his buddy, Apollo Creed, who says he has a deed to some land and a nice house for him and Grogu to settle down in between their little space adventures. He gladly accepts that. IG-11's back, baby! That's right. That was supposed to be, a, I guess, a touching moment for someone. I didn't care at all. But yeah, they fixed that guy up something fierce. He's ready to die all over again in season four or five or however many they go until this is inevitably just a shell of its former self. Which in a lot of ways it kind of already is. In our final shot, we see Din Djarin, the Mandalorian himself, just kind of hanging out on a rocking chair on the front porch of his space farmhouse, taken in the air with his fucking helmet on because he still refuses to take it off there's no one else there it's him and grogu take off the helmet you jackass camera does a slow pan away we see little grogu picking up a frog a callback to season two i believe and then he drops it down and we get an old timey circle fade out and it freezes and that was it
overall impressions of the season, a complete shit show that my kids aren't watching. That's, that's the takeaway. My kids checked out of this show. So who is it really going after anymore? I, I really don't know. In what I feel like was an attempt this season to open up the arms as wide as they could and pull in every age group imaginable, they ended up alienating a large chunk that was invested in the first two seasons. A lot of them jumped during the Book of Boba Fett, but I was still there. I was still eager to at least have some excitement over this show. By the time this finale rolled around, I didn't care at all. I mean, I really stopped caring after about two episodes in. However, we finished it up, and I have to say, one decent episode does not make up for the complete mess that this whole thing was. It seems like it's more interested now to bridge the gap between the old and the new, and I'm guessing season four is gonna go even deeper into the lore. And that lore is kind of a bore. Well, those are my thoughts on the Mandalorian season three finale and just the season as a whole. Let me know in the comments below. What, what did you think? Did it tie everything up nicely? Did you like the slow roll build with some of the filler episodes that made no sense or were just kind of dumb? Did you like the focus on the Mandalorian family? Or do you miss the old seasons like I do and hope for a more gritty return in season four, which I highly doubt we're gonna get. Let me know, like this video if you had some fun. Again, please, please hit that notification bell. I need these to propagate into your feed. Otherwise, you may never see these videos. Subscribing, of course, helps, but the notification bell is that extra step that you must take. This is the way. This is the way. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go this way because I'm done recording. All right, thanks, I'll see you next time. Dum dum, dum dum, dum dum, dum dum. This show got kind of dumb. Boom, 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 boom.